Good morning again, Emmanuel Church. Good morning, internet family and friends. Uh, we have a, an amazing, another amazing message from the Lord. And uh, so let's bow in prayer as we go before the Lord. Father, we come before you, Father. Thank you for being the amazing God you are and for being so concerned about, you, about us and your creation. Uh, you want us to be in heaven with you. And we pray to God that we will be a light on a hill proclaiming the way to the kingdom of heaven to the shed blood of the Lord Jesus, your son whom you sent to deliver us. And in the meantime, you provide for us, you care for us, uh, and uh, you're helping us be transformed into the image of your son. And we pray for our internet family and friends as well who uh, may or may not know the Lord. We pray to God that they will come to know you and that they will walk closely with you and that they'll be reading the word every day, praying every day, and listening for your voice every day as we here in the church are doing the same. We thank you, Father, for loving us so much, and we just praise your holy name because we pray this and ask this in the powerful name, the righteous name, the caring name, the forgiving name, the creating name. Whose name, church? In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's go uh, quickly over the... the uh, the 30 promises that we've had these past weeks. And uh, as a list, th this list is, a, is promises, and there's more than seven, there's probably more than 7,000 promises. But this list of 30 are to born again children of God. They are not for everyone, they're for his children. So number one, we do not need to fear we do not need to fear anything because God is for the eternal good of all of us, his children. We have the promise, number two, of perfect peace with our total being being focused on Christ. If we get, if we get distracted and we're got, we get hung up in the world, we're going to start having pain and sorrow and suffering. But if we refocus back on Jesus, he will give us his perfect peace, his peace that he gives us from the inside because he's living there in the form of the Holy Spirit. Number three is we will never be abandoned by our God. He cannot lie. If you're a born again child of God, he will never leave you. He will never leave you. That's awesome. His Number four, his plan is to teach and train us in his righteousness forever. Forever. He's never going to give up on us. We have number five, the promise of eternal life to those who genuinely are born again and are transformed by the blood of Jesus by total and absolute belief in Jesus for salvation. That's the only way to heaven. That's the only way to heaven. Number six, the promise of rest. When you're weary, anybody weary and heavily burdened this week or past week or past month, God will pair up with us to carry all of our burdens when we call out to him, amen? Number seven, the promise of renewed strength by taking on God's power through submission again to his spirit. Number eight, the promise of protection from the devourer and the blessings from the creator through the de devotion of our lives and finances to God's work. And that's what Pastor Ray was talking about earlier. Number nine, the promise of the restoration of our souls as we allow God to shepherd us in his ways. If you're looking for uh, restoration of your soul, read Psalm 23. The promise of never quitting or giving up on you because God is working as a masterful craftsman, perfecting us all into the image of his son. Amen? That's awesome. The image of Jesus. Number 11, the promise of the inheritance of the entire kingdom of God. We are eternally rich. Amen? Amen. Number 12, the promise of destroying all evil, including the wicked people, and upholding his righteous born-again children. Amen. The promise that the Lord will fight for you. Vengeance belongs to God. He will repay all the evil that's done. Yes, we're supposed to stand for truth. Yes, we're supposed to hold people accountable. Uh, we're supposed to remind them of what sin is, but we're not to be vengeful. Amen. 
he will repay. The promise uh, number 14 of he who overcomes will sit on the throne with Jesus. Amen. As Jesus overcame sin and death, we have his power to overcome our sins, death, and all of our addictions. Uh, God has that power. Number 15, the promise of no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. Because of the blood atonement and the sacrifice of Jesus and our absolute faith in him, we are justified and sanctified in Yahweh God's eyes. Amen? That's awesome. He has cast our sins as far as the east is from the west. The promise number 16 of being filled with the fullness of Yahweh God who submit to his will and, his, and walk in his spirit. Amen. Number 17, the promise of being a new creation with total faith in Jesus, confirmed by the presence of the Holy Spirit, again, living in us. We are becoming a new creation, again, in the image of Jesus. Number 18, the promise that no weapon formed against you will prosper. Uh, no harmful words or schemes or plots of Satan or other people are going to remain. For God is our shield, our fortress, and our strong tower, and he will make all things right, including uh, any, any harm that was done to us. Number 19, the promise of Jesus preparing a place for us in his Father's house. Jesus told his disciples that he's going away to prepare a place, not only for them, but for all of us. Amen? So you have a mansion in the sky, or at least a room in the mansion in the sky. <laughs> Number 20, uh, because he's preparing a place for us, he's gonna come back. He's gonna return for us. Since Jesus is again is preparing for a place for us, he is coming back to get us. Amen? And he cannot lie. 21, the promise of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, again, is living in us and is a guarantee of our genuine faith in Jesus and it's a guarantee of our eternal life in heaven. Number 22, the promise, if you draw near to God, he will draw near to you. If you resist the devil, resist sin, draw near to God, he will draw near to you. You will feel his mighty presence. Number 23, the promise of great plans for you. Yahweh God's entire plan was and is to redeem his believing human creation so that we could be with him forever. And individually here on earth, he has great plans for each one of us. Plans that will, if followed by his will and way, will transfer into the kingdom of heaven and we will have those rewards, those uh, blessings forever. Number 24, the promise of enjoying life and seeing many happy days. Our happiest days are in God's presence, whether on earth or in heaven. Number 25, the promise of the covenant of being God's daughters and sons being maintained in his love and peace. Again, in his presence is the fullness of joy and love. Number 26, the promise of God's provision for you. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the other things needed will be added to you. When we seek the kingdom of God first, God will do the rest. When we follow him and his plans and purposes. Number 27, the promise of comfort for our souls. God gives grace and comfort to the humble, those with a contrite heart towards him. Number 28, the promise to answer our prayers. God will answer your prayer. It might be yes, no, or not now. 29, the promise of righteous and holy judgment for every person ever conceived. Righteous and holy judgment. God will fairly and righteously judge everyone. Number 30, the promise of eternal protection. All who are victorious will inherit all these blessings and I will be their God and they will be my children. Now many of these promises, are they're all intertwined. They're all connected, amen? 
So those are the promises of God, at least a few of them. Now, here's the question. Does irreducible complexity disprove evolution? Again, uh, what is irreducible complexity? Well, here's the definition. It's the minimum amount of complexity a system must have functional so that the system can still maintain its primary function. For example, your phone. Now, if you have a phone, in order for your phone to function, the screen has to be visible. All, all the pixels got to work right. With all the pixels functioning, and it has to have battery power. So if the battery and the pixels aren't working, you won't have a screen. Also, the volume has to be working. If you can't hear anything, what good is your phone? You can't make a call. Or if your keyboard on your phone isn't functioning, how are you going to dial out? So all of those are major components of your phone. If all of those aren't working properly, your phone is useless, right? That's a definition of complexity. Now, if re you reduce any of those, your phone is useless. So irreducible complexity, does it disprove evolution? Well, let's look at the definition of evolution. The evolution is the gradual development, did you get that? The gradual development of something, especially from a simple to a more complex form of life. Now, this is their definition, it's not mine. The process by which different kinds of living organisms are thought to have developed and diversified from earlier forms of life to a more complex form. Now, it sounds plausible, but is it really? Well, let's examine one of the facets of our body, the eye. Now, how much of your eye has to be complete in order for you to see? Now, Jeannie had uh, laser surgery this past week. And before that, she had cataract surgery. She had to have her lens repaired. Now, the, the rest of the eye was functioning, but the lens was clouded up. She couldn't see very well. So, let me show you this image on the next screen. Now, what part of the eye can you do without and still see? Well, it's obviously hardly any of it. We have to have the whole eye has to be complete. It has to be functioning in order for you to see. Isn't that right? Now, we all need all portions of our eye in order to see. So the, here it is. The evolutionary theory fails because none of the parts of the human eye could slowly or gradually develop over a course of a thousand years or we would have been blind and we would have died because we couldn't see anything to feed ourselves. Then this brings up the digestive system. How much of your digestive system could have developed slowly over many years so that we could survive and not have starved to death, right? Well, which part do you think you can do without and you still be able to function as a human being? Not much, right? In fact, almost 99% of each one of these major components of our body have to be completely and totally intact or we start losing ground. We start deteriorating into death. Again, we need all these parts functioning properly in order to have not starved to death. Then we have the human brain. Now, how much of it, <laughs> although some people say uh, people are, don't have much of a brain, they, they really do. How much of the human brain do we have to have? How much of it has to be completed before we could function as a human being? You have to have all of it, pretty much all of it. So, even if you're uh, like football players, if they're, if they're playing on a football field and they, they have all their faculties and they're, they're very athletic and, and 
strong and healthy, but if they get whacked in the head, if they go into a concussion, they can't remember stuff. So how much of your part, how much of your brain do you need to have functioning in order to survive as a human being? Well, again, we need all of our brain to function properly. And we, we see uh, when people start having dementia, they can't remember things. They can't remember uh, not only people's names, but then they, they can't remember uh, how, to, how to dress themselves and, and things like that. So, so if any major parts of our bodies, our body's biological systems are missing, we could not have survived. We could not have evolved from evolution. Evolution is false. Therefore, irreducible complexity disproves evolution, which I now call evolution. It's evil. And I call it evil because it is Satan's ploy to deceive billions and billions of people that there is no creator God. Let's read Genesis 3. I mean, Genesis 1. In the beginning, Elohim, or Almighty God, El Shaddai, created bara, which means by forming from nothing the what? The heavens and the what? And the earth and all that's in it. The earth was formless and void, Tohu and Bohu, or a waste and emptiness. And the darkness was upon the face of the deep, the prime, primeval ocean that covered the unformed earth. And by the way, God made that too. The Spirit of God was moving. It was hovering, brooding over the face of the waters. And God said, God willed it into existence. Let there be light. And there was light. God saw the light was good, pleasing, and useful, and he affirmed it, and he sustained it. And God separated the light, distinguishing it from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, sunset, and there was morning, sunrise, one day. Most of the world, get this, brothers and sisters, most of the world does not believe this verse of God. Most of the world doesn't believe that. Well, they might believe in a God, but they don't believe in this creator God. And it's, that's extremely important. In Psalms 53, 1, it goes on to say, Only fools in their hearts say there is no God. They are what? Who said that? Who said that? Right. Diana. Thank you. They are corrupt, and their actions are what? What are they? Yes, evil. Thank you, Linda. They're evil. They're corrupt and they're evil. Not one of them does good. God looks down from the earth or from heaven on, on the entire human race. He looks to see if anyone is truly wise, if anyone seeks God. I hope that we all are seeking God. Amen? But no, all have turned away. All have become corrupt. No one does good. Not a single one. God has been calling out to humans to come to know him. He drags them. He pulls them. Now, listen to this. Most of our mainstream media outlets, most of the world's government leaders, most universities, high schools, and even our elementary schools are teaching false lies about the creation of our universe. We think that when we send our children to school that they are being taught truth, but they are not. That is why they are being read to you by drag queens, being taught sexual things that they do not need to know at their young age. Our public schools are corrupted by the lies of satanic proportions. You know what God says about the world? He says, all that is in the world is lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And that is not of the Father. They are being taught CRT, which is critical race theory, that we are now a racist nation, which is a lie. We used to be a racist nation, but that, that was diminished 
a great deal over 70 years ago. As a nation, United States of America, we are the most accepting of all races of people more than any other nation in the entire world. If you want to see a movie about America's racism, watch the movie uh, about Jackie Robinson called 42. That's when we were racist. We're not, we're not like that anymore. They're also, now this is again in our public schools and universities across the nation, across the world. They're they are teaching, trying to teach uh, DEI, which stands for diversity, equity, and inclusion, which all again sounds good, right? But it's a facade. It's a facade for teaching discrimination, enabling, and indoctrination. The diversity they, they teach is to discriminate against white and Asian people, which is just reverse discrimination. We are to love all, God's word as Christians, we are to love all people, even our enemies, and do good to them. And the best we can do for them is to point them to Jesus and his plans for them. Amen? Luke 6, 27 says, But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who what? Who hate you. Wow, that's tough, isn't it? Thank you. Bless those who curse you and... And what? And pray. Pray for people that hate me? Yes. Pray for those who spitefully use you. Uh, to him who strikes you on the one cheek, offer the other also. Now that doesn't mean we take abuse. That means... That if we get a if we get insulted, we don't take it to heart. We don't we don't lash back. Because God it has approved of us. Amen. We don't need other people's approval. Did you know that? If you have God's approval, whose approval do you need besides God's? Certainly, we like to have people care for us and and uh, say, "Oh, you're you know, you're you're a nice person." But really, we're not really nice people unless God is living in us. Amen. So, to him who strikes your one cheek, offer the other also. And from him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. In other words, if they have need of it, give it to them. You know why? God will take care of you. Give to anyone who what? Asks. Yes, thank you, Stacy. Who asks of you? The other day I was at a 52nd in Wadsworth and there was a lady who had a sign. She wanted some, needed some uh, food and stuff. She said, will you please help? I couldn't refuse. She asked. So I, so I gave her $4 and I gave her a track about Jesus. That's who she really needs. And from him who takes away your goods, do not ask them back. Just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. Now, we ought to love people, but that does not mean we accept their sin as normal or good. Thieves, rapists, pedophiles, murderers, abortionists are to be disciplined because it is a sin. And so is homosexuality, transgenderism, and any sexual intercourse outside of the marriage of a woman and a man. And here's what God says. Don't take it from me. Romans 1, 17 says, Yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't what? They wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. And they began to think of foolish ideas of what God was like. As a result, their minds became dark and confused. Claiming to be wise, they became utter fools. And instead of worshiping the glorious, ever-loving ever God, living God, they worshiped idols and made to look like mere what? People. In other words, a lot of people worship sexuality, the creation of God, rather than the creator. And birds and animals and reptiles... Romans 1, 24. So God, listen to this, abandoned them to do whatever shameful things their hearts desired. 
As a result, they did vile and degrading things with each other's what? Bodies. Thank you, Linda. They traded the truth about God for a lie, so they worshiped and served the things God created instead of the Creator Himself, who is worthy of eternal praise. Amen. That is why God abandoned them to their shameful desires. Even women turned against their natural way to have sex and instead indulged in sex with each other. And men, instead of having normal sexual relations with women, burned with lust for each other. Men did shameful things with other men. As a result of this sin, they suffered within themselves the penalty that they deserve. And there has been many penalties of homosexual activity. Since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God, he what? Anybody? Thank you, Stacy. He abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let them do things that should never have been done. Their lives became full of every what? Thank you, Linda. Every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, quarreling, deception, malicious behavior, and gossip. Now, the best way to love people and we ought to love all people. Transgenders, homosexuals, black, white. The best way to love people is to warn them of the consequences of their sin and point them to Jesus in a humble way, in a loving way. Now, another thing that they teach is that that was on diversity. Another thing they teach is they're hiding diversity, they're hiding sin under the, the, the heading of diversity. Another thing they do is they teach equity. They want everybody to be equal. They so-called teach, the, the equity they so-called teach is really enabling people to remain in their unmotiv unmotivated state of non-accomplishment, entitlements, and sin, the sin of covetousness, by giving them other people's goods instead of pointing them to God and to Jesus' plans, his great plans for them. Yahweh God did not, and you can see this yourself, Yahweh God did not create all people to be equal. That's why some people he created some people to be very talented and some not so talented. Isn't that right? He created some people to be very attractive and some not to be so attractive, right? God gave people varying degrees of talents, of resources, of beauty, of mental capacities so that he could reach them for the gospel, so that they could become equal participants, equal participants in his eternal kingdom of heaven. Amen? Here's, here's what God's word says. In Acts 17, 26, and he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on the face of the earth, having determined their pre-appointed what? What is it? Times, yes. And the boundaries of their lands and territories. This was so that they would seek God if perhaps they might, what? Grasp for him, reach out to him, and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and exist, that is in him we actually have our being, no matter how much talent we have. Now let me give you a little tip here. If God has given you great amounts of talents, he expects great amounts of effort from you for his kingdom. If he's given you a little talent, well, he expects you to give all you have of your little talent for his kingdom. So percentage-wise, we are to give 100% of whatever God has given us for his kingdom, whether we have a, a lot of talent or a little talent. Amen? 
It's, so the, it's, it's in the percentage, it's not in the amount that we give back to God. So we are to encourage people to stay off drugs, alcohol, and to develop their God-given talents to become all that God wants them to be, and especially to become part of the kingdom of God. That's where the equity is. That's where the diversity is, is in the kingdom of God. It's not going to be here on earth. Now the government, here's what the government's plan. Government wants to be the people's God instead of encouraging them to seek the true God and his plans for them. Inclusiveness. They the inclusiveness they, te they teach is really indoctrination that tells people they are victims. Instead of having them been made Instead of having them been made in the image of God and that God having great plans for them if they seek him. Our children are being taught in public school to hate Christians and to hate our Christian heritage. Now, we're not perfect as a nation, never have been. But because our Constitution is made up of over 50% of direct and indirect quotes from the Bible, Satan, the globalists, the unbelieving world, hates our U.S. Constitution, and they hate Christians. They may not say it outwardly, but they do. God said it. He said, if they, if they hate you, it's because they hated me first. Even though they don't outwardly say that Jesus says it, they outwardly say that Jesus says this. If the world hates what? Thank you, Steve. You know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world will love its own. Yet, because you are not of the what? Of the world, thank you. But I chose you. I chose you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. We wonder why there's so much uh, persecution of Christians in, in countries all around. Because they, they hate Jesus and they hate them. Us. Remember the word I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know. What is it? Him? Him. Who's him? The father. The Father who sent me. If I had not come and spoke to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no what? Excuse, thank you. They have no excuse for the sin. He who hates me, hates my Father also. So not only do they hate Jesus, the Father, and us, but they hate the truth that comes from knowing the true God and the gospel. So, the true inclusiveness is to be included in the eternal kingdom of heaven forever and not to be just included in earthly things for a few short years. Amen? Everybody's focused on, on uh, what's going on here on earth and your retirement. And, well, what about, we only live 70, 80, 90 years. What about eternity? People should be more interested in where they're going to spend the thousand, the million, the billion years. So anyway, the, the true, the true inclusiveness, is to be, inclusiveness is to be included in the eternal kingdom of heaven forever and not to be included in earthly things for just a few short years. The true equity is to be part of the eternal kingdom of God. The true diversity is that Yahweh God died, paid the price, for all races, nationalities, tribes, nations, so that all people could be forgiven of their sins and become citizens of heaven, no matter who they are or where they came from or their social status or their, uh, or their, uh, the, how, much, how rich they are. When they believe on Jesus' finished work on the cross for them, that their faith is solely and totally in his shed blood for the forgiveness and atonement for their sins, they will be saved. They will be in the eternal kingdom of God. So in conclusion, evolution is a lie. 
Internet family and friends, evolution is a lie. It's a lie proposed by atheistic, rogue teachers, scientists, government leaders who refuse to believe in a creator God. Irreducible complexity proves that along, that along with the first and second law of thermodynamics, that evolution is false. Evolution is a religion believed in by people who are against the belief of the creator and only creator God. The lies of atheistic public education are growing more and more each day because God has been taken out of our schools and the curriculum. We have more and more educators, school boards who are atheistic and therefore more anti-God lies are being introduced to our impressionable children. Why else would they let drag queens in our schools? And the false and destructive discrimination, which is distancing our children's belief in Jesus as our God, and is further proof, proof of our destruction of our once Christian nation. The true diversity, equity, and inclusion is attained for all people by believing by faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus for the forgiveness of all of mankind's sins and for their sins, receiving him as their only Savior and Lord. So what does all this mean? All this means God wants us, here's the summation, God wants us to love everyone by telling them his truth. And he especially wants his children, us, to love each other and care for one another and be there for one another. So I want you to know publicly that Jeannie and I are here for every one of you, whatever you may need. Amen? And that we are family. We are the true family. The church, the born again children of God the, is the true church, is the true family. It's the family of the eternal kingdom of God. And internet family and friends, you're part of that family too. And we love you and we pray for you. We pray that you walk in the power and strength of God's spirit, being born again and saved by his precious blood. Thank you for being here today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, dear God, for the enormity of your word, the power of your word, the power of who you are. You are indescribable. You are indescribable. No words can describe the awesomeness of who you are. So we thank you, dear God, for loving us and caring for us, providing for us, and all the promises you have given us. May we be yielded vessels, surrendered to you, for you to do your work through us by the power of your mighty spirit through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, because we pray this and ask this and believe this in the Righteous name, the holy name, the forgiving name, the creating name. We pray this in whose name? In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for spending time with us today. But remember, please spend time in the presence of the Lord God, being intimate with Him, praying, reading His Word, and applying His Word to your lives. Because... In Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24, Thus says the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. And let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glories glory in this, that he knows and understands me, Yahweh God. Because he is the Lord, he exercises loving kindness, judgment, righteousness in the earth. For in these he delights in, says the Lord. Let us adopt these principles daily in our lives that the Lord's grace may always be upon you and me. God bless you and may you be completely enthralled in the love of God that he has for you.